his abilities prevent Stephen Hawking from speaking a word, but he's risen above them to become a brilliant mathematician and teacher. Using a computer-driven voice synthesizer, he's told the world how the universe began, and now he's seeking the ultimate theory of how it works. Arthur C. Clarke invented the communication satellite long before the technology existed to launch one. That vision of the future fathered the global village. His novels and stories, including 2001 A Space Odyssey, have inspired a generation of real-life astronauts. Stephen Hawking, you use a mathematical concept that you call imaginary time, which seems to be able to run backwards as well as forwards. <laughs> In our theories, there are two kinds of time. There is what is called real time. This is a kind of time that is measured by a clock. The time that we feel passing, the time in which we grow older. Then there is imaginary time. Of course, imaginary time is an idea that science fiction writers, like Arthur, have used in their stories. But imaginary time is also a well-defined mathematical concept. It can be thought of as a direction of time that is at right angles to ordinary, real time, in a certain sense. The universe has a beginning in real time, at the Big Bang. And it may well have an end, if it collapses to a big crunch. But in imaginary time, it has no beginning or end. Rather, imaginary time is closed in on itself, like the surface of the Earth. The surface of the Earth doesn't have any beginning or end. I know, because I have been round the world, and I didn't fall off. Oh, I lost. <laughs>